Welcome back. This is video 11 of making schematics and PCBs with KiCad. In this video I'll show you how to export schematics into the PCB editor, arranging the footprints, connecting all the footprint components with traces, using vias for double-sided boards when needed, and checking to see that it all works. Let's pick up where we left off last time. When we ended KiCad part 10, we had the entire schematic prepared and, and everything was working. And in this video, we'll start by exporting that schematic to the PCB editor. In my workflow, I will click on Open PCB and Board Editor. It tells me it does not exist yet. Yes, I want to create it. Here's my new PCB layout, and I have to populate it with the parts from my schematic. So I'm going to go up here to Update PCB with Changes Made to Schematic and update the PCB and close. There's my footprints, so I'll click them anywhere on the board and then I can zoom in to see them. Now I just need to arrange where they're at. It shows all the connections, electrical connections between them, so I can lay them out the way that will best fit my size of board. The first thing I'll do in PCB Editor is double click on the properties of the page. I can put today as the issue date, the title, and I'll put myself as the author. And now I just need to arrange the layout so that all the electrical connections are correct and I can try to lay out all the, the solder traces on one side of the board. That's the goal. So I'm going to move these components away from the board a little bit, give myself some room to work with. Here they are separated a little so now I can start to work to rearrange them. At this point it's your preference on how you want to arrange them, whichever components you want to start with. Just arrange them so that these electrical connections shown by these lines will be able to made on, be made as many as possible on one side of the board. Here I've moved the component footprints around. Now that I have the footprints moved, I'm going to start placing traces between the components to complete the electrical connections. So I click on Route Tracks, and then I'm going to zoom in a little bit and just click where your track starts and ends. The width of the track is set by default for a net class width. You can change that if you want, but this should work fine for now. I prefer going all the simple routes first. Now I come to some areas where there looks like there might be some overlap. Try to think, how can I route these tracks without going on top of each other? For example, this, this track here looks like it needs to connect to this pad. I can route that around this other component. So here's some of it laid out, but now we come to a point where there's some complications. It looks like wires have to be crossed. I can't do some of these without crossing over the top of each other, and that won't work for traces. Both of these tracks are coming out of the same pad on this footprint of this IC. I can add a trace here and then delete these tracks here. Just click and highlight and then delete. And then I can connect this one track to somewhere there. But I have that problem here where two traces are going to cross, or two tracks are going to cross. Same here. Let me introduce one way to solve that problem. First, I'm going to move this component up a little, and I'll reroute that track. What I'm going to do is lay a track starting from here, uh, maybe to that point, and then I'm going to right-click on that point and say Place Through Via. I'll put a via there, then I'm going to go down to this next pad here, start bringing a track up, then again, right click and say place through via, and I'll click right there. When I draw the next segment in line, it's a blue line. That's because I've switched to the bottom copper layer instead of the front copper layer. So what that means is it, it's going to place that track on the opposite side of the PCB board. And then I can go back to the front copper layer and place another track from there to there, and they don't actually connect. One's on the top of the board, the other's on the bottom of the board. That's what a via does. It's basically a hole in the board surrounded with copper. You can consider it like a jumper trace. And I can do the same from this segment.
then my last one I'm having trouble with snapping to the grid so let me cancel that again I'm going to change the grid size make it a little smaller then I can place from the grid right click place through via then I'll go with a via underneath all these right click place through via and then back to my front copper layer and I can complete the track there at this point I can look at my PCB layout take a visual look to see if it looks like all the electrical connections are made uh, you may want to zoom in and and just kind of look around to make sure it doesn't look like there's anything disconnected but a visual inspection is not enough you need to run the design rules checker what that does is double check to make sure everything's electrically connected correctly so I will click on that and then run the design rules checker it does give me a warning and an error notice it flags those here so now I can go and check those the first one is a warning saying the component R1 pad 2 of R1 on the front copper layer does not connect correctly it has an unconnected end so let's take a look at that let's close this for now we'll zoom in near R1 and take a look there's R1 pad 2 if I click on this track oh see there's the problem I've got two different tracks it doesn't realize they're overlapping connecting to each other so what I'm going to do is I'll just highlight the one and hit delete click and hold and drag the end until it connects now if I click on it it's one continuous track so now let's rerun our design rules checker and see if it sees that as a problem anymore so I'm gonna delete the markers and I'm gonna run this again and it still says it has an unconnected end Ah, and there it is this time if I zoom in and click here it's wanting to know well, which one am I looking for there's a tiny little track by itself I'm going to delete that one and see how it's not connected there's another track if I highlight that one so I can delete that line and then redraw a connection into that pad there so here I've redrawn my tracks from resistor 1 to resistor 2 and also to this pad of the IC now I can run the design rules check again and it's fixed that warning it only gives me one error the PC board has no edges found on the edge cuts layer I can be on the edge cuts layer and draw an outline but if I have a board that's already a specific size I should try to fit my whole PCB inside that space so I have boards that are already pre-manufactured boards I have one that's a uh, 58 millimeters by 83 millimeters what I'm going to do first before the edge cut is to try to squeeze some of this footprint tighter together close that and then rearrange my footprints to fit it in a smaller space here's my redesigned board I'm going to select the edge cuts layer and select the draw line tool and when you connect all of the four edges together you'll see these squares that uh, indicate that you've got a complete enclosed shape so there's my new edge cuts I'm going to go back to the design check window delete the markers rerun the DRC and this tells me that I have lines over the silkscreen line over the edge cuts line if we zoom in you can see that there so I can't put anything over the edge cuts so I'm going to go back in and have to rearrange my footprints again. So there's my new outline. I'm going to go back to the design checker again, delete the markers, rerun it, and no errors detected. So everything will work with this PCB layout. The last thing to do before exporting these files to print is to take a 3D look at your board. You do that by going up here to View, then click on the 3D Viewer, and you can highlight different components. If you hold the left mouse button, you can grab and pan and tilt and rotate. Center wheel scrolling allows you to zoom in or zoom out. 
Notice you can see the traces. And then if you turn the board over on the other side, you can see the vias. So this is a nice view of what your board will look like when it's printed and all the components are mounted. So that looks good. So I'm gonna close that out and we'll be ready to do the final step. Now we're ready to export our PCB files to be printed. For this project, where I'm gonna print it in-house with a Volterra V1 printed circuit board printer, but we could also prepare it to go to a board house to be printed. To prepare the files to print, I'll go over to File, and there's two ways you can do this. You can either go to Fabrication Outputs, and then Gerbers. The files that are needed to do the printing are called Gerber files. And then if it has through-hole components, like our battery connect here, we need to produce the drill files. So we can go to Fabrication Outputs, Gerbers and Drill Files, or you can go to Plot, and then select Gerber and Drill Files as well. So I'll select the Gerber files first. When I open this window, it says, well, what's our output directory? We can select that. I'm in my personal folder in the R drive, SMD continuity tester. So I'm gonna select that folder and it gives me the pathway to that folder here. I'm gonna say, yes, that's what I want. And then here are the layers to include. Let me talk about those layers. So I'm gonna close this for now. Go back and talk about these layers. The layers are shown over on this side. Right now I'm on the front copper layer. There's also a back or bottom copper layer. When you print, you can have the silk screen, which will be the labels that it will print to show where the components go. If you want to select those, you can click on this eye icon to show what the front silk screen consists of. So if I turn it off, you can see what disappears. So these are the component labels that it prints. The courtyard is the boundaries that say you can't put anything closer to this component or else it'll violate the integrity of that component's footprint. So it's not gonna be printed, but it shows the boundaries around each component. There's also the edge cuts layer that shows how big our board is. If I go to objects, it also shows I can click on the tracks or the vias. So these layers, when I go to export them, I need to include certain layers so that the printer has the right information Go to File, Fabrication Outputs, Gerbers. I'm gonna leave these layers all included. I may not need them all, but if I need them, it'll have them, it comes pre-selected. So again, I'm gonna to go to my Output Directory and select the SMD Continuity Tester as my folder. Select that, I'll say yes, and then I will plot. Then when I'm ready to generate drill files, I'll click on that. It has the same Output Directory. I can go in here and check again select that folder and this time it gives all the pre-selected units i'm going to be in inches i'm just going to say yeah we'll generate the drill files and then i'm going to close that here are my output messages that say what was plotted and so i can close that now any pcb manufacturer will need the gerber files and drill files to be able to print the board but before sending the files to the board house or the printer it's a good idea to view them I'm going to go to the KiCad main project window, and I'm going to go to Gerber Viewer. And then I go up to File, so I can open the Gerber plot files. Here I am in uh, my KiCad folder, User Projects, my folder. I put everything in the project folder that I'm working on, in this case the SMD Continuity Tester. And if you look, all of these that end in .gbr, those are the Gerber files. I can click on any of those that I want to see. Here's the bottom copper layer. So let's try the front copper layer. When I open that, there it is. Now if I go to open Gerber job file and click on the job file and open that, and it loads the entire project, all of the Gerber files. And then it shows me over here on the layers which Gerber files are being plotted. And this allows me to check, like if I deselect the front silk screen, that disappears so I can tell, oh, that's what that is. The front mask, notice nothing is missing so I don't need that layer. The front paste, same thing. Notice the front copper layer, the bottom copper layer, and the edge cuts that shows the edge of the board. So I'm going to leave those layers selected. It looks like everything is, is working the way it should be on my Gerber files. So now I can upload these files to the software for the Volterra V1 printer that I'm going to use to print this board in-house. Or if I wanted to have this board printed at a board house, I could do that. If 
For example, JLC boardhouse, JLC PCB is a boardhouse that a lot of hobbyists use to print prototypes. So if you go to that website, it has add Gerber file. What I need to do before importing those Gerber files is to zip them all together. So I'm going to go to my file explorer. I'm in the KiCad folder. I'll go to my user projects, my projects. Here's the SMD continuity tester folder and all of my Gerber files. So if I select all of these Gerber files and drill files. So after selecting all of those, I'm going to right click and select send to and then make a compressed or a zipped folder. It's going to create a zipped folder and with the name of one of the files, I'm going to change that name to just SMD continuity tester. So here's my zipped SMD continuity tester folder. Now I go back to my website for JLC PCB and uh, this add Gerber file, if I click on that, I just need to tell it where my files are. It's in my folders here. I'll click on that zipped file and click open. It uploads those. It's processing the Gerber files and then shows me what my boards would look like. So here's my double-sided board. It shows the Gerber files and uh, comes pre-selected with FR4 fiberglass as the substrate. Double-sided board shows my dimensions, gives me a quantity of boards. You can change any of these options. You have lots of things you can choose from. These board houses will give you a lot of variety, uh, tell you the, the price and uh, the turnaround time to have them printed and shipped. So it's a reasonable thing to do it through a board house, but if you want to do in-house, I'll be using the Volterra V1 printer and I'll just upload my Gerber files in that program. I need to take this time to tell you about errors in the schematic and PCB layout. So after I had moved some of the wires around it earlier in KiCad video 10, I did the schematic wrong. So this layout shows the correct schematic. I had changed it and had accidentally pin one connected to pins six and two, and this corrects it and shows just pin one connected to ground, pins two and six connected to each other. So the schematic was wrong, and because of that, there was an error in the PCB layout as well. So I thought I'd take this time to show you how to fix that. If you ever end up with that problem, say you go all the way through a project and then you realize, oh, I've got a problem with my PCB layout. If you change your schematic, then you can update your PCB from the schematic. So here's the corrected schematic. You open the PCB in the board editor, then you go to this button, update PCB with changes made to schematic. So when you click on that, you wanna make sure that you have check marked replace footprints with those specified in the schematic. Then you run this update PCB. When there's no errors, you close that, and here's the correct PCB layout. This shows the new connection lines after we've updated our PCB that I need to put in. So I go over here to route tracks, and then you can add some new tracks where they need to be. At this point, I can see that I can't cross this track with another track, so I'll need to put a via in place. So I'll put a couple of vias in here and a track on the bottom. You can see it's a, on the bottom copper layer for that via. So here's my final PCB layout that's correct, but I made the Gerber files from this so the print will be correct. So thank you for watching this video. In this one, I showed you how to generate your PCB layout, import the schematic and arrange your components, connect them components with traces and vias, uh, run the design rules checker and fix any errors, lay out the edge cuts layer for the board size you want, show the 3D viewer to see the preview of what your board will look like, and then export the Gerber files and drill files and preview those. Now you're all ready to print your PCB. Thanks for watching this video and all of the videos in this series. Hopefully you feel more confident in using KiCad to develop printed circuit boards and your PCBs are well on the way.